2023 brings with it playoff dreams for Penn State. And on a rainy April Saturday, this group of Nittany Lions walks into this historic stadium for the first time. But before we kick it off, one of their own sings the national anthem. Golden Israel Achumba welcomes you to Happy Valley for the first time since Pasadena. Here come the reigning Rose Bowl champs in their annual blue-white game at Beaver Stadium. Well, campus was up early. We were up early as we welcome you up to the broadcast booth with Matt Millen, Connor Onion, Matt McGloin down in the field here in just a few minutes. An 11 and 2 record last year for Penn State, a Rose Bowl championship and a ton of talent back. There's a reason that there's optimism they could go to the playoffs. And the biggest reason is going to be the experience that they have and they have experience all over the field. I really like their secondary. They lost a couple guys, but they're good up front defense. They can rush the passer. They love the speed of that defense. Offensively, that offensive line is coming together. They have to find a receiver outside, but it looks pretty good except for one spot. Yeah, a receiver to throw to. They need somebody to throw it to them with the quarterbacks, Drew Adler and Bo uh, Prabula. They're duking it out. This is a real competition with Sean Clifford gone. It is. It, and so, and Clifford had what they don't have, and that's experience. But you can see Allar has got great arm talent. He's a young kid. He moves better than you think he has. He's got great size. He can really spin the ball. But Primula is a kid. He's just got it. He's got a feel for the position. He understands where he has to go with the ball. They just both lack experience. Well, we're talking quarterbacks. We've got one on the sidelines today. Matt McGloin down in the field at Beaver Stadium. Hey, Coach. Today is practice number 15 for you guys, Coach. Looking back. Did you get answers to the questions you had about your team this spring? Yeah, there's always obviously still some questions out there that we got to get resolved. But I thought we had a great spring. Still got some things we got to get resolved before West Virginia, but I like where we're at. One of the questions on everybody's mind is the quarterback competition. How have these young guys handled that? It's been good. You know, obviously Drew got some experience last year. Bo, we got a lot of uh, confidence in and it's been a battle this spring. Jackson Smolik's been able to get some reps which are valuable. Uh, we'll see how they kind of transform between now and West Virginia. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. A decade as the head coach, James Franklin, start of year 10. And this is going to be different than last year's spring game. This is going to be played like a real football game outside of the timing. Yeah, we used to call that, I guess now we call it old school. That's what used to have a spring game and it was played like a game. Last year they Departed from that. I didn't particularly care for it, but they're going to have the uh, the game format the way it's supposed to be. Now each team will get two timeouts on top of that format. It will be the blue team out first with Drew Aller at quarterback, one of those two guys we just talked about in competition at quarterback. Yeah, they go to man coverage right away, and they're going to move somebody out. So Aller knows he's got straight man. And Aller goes underneath, and it's incomplete. At the feet of Harrison Wallace, one of the guys, Matt, that's competing for that crowded wide receiver room that turns over Parker Washington and Mitchell Tinsley. Yeah, I think they're going to miss uh, Parker Washington and Tinsley's speed on the outside. I I like to have uh, Parker Washington back. My own personal opinion, I I think he made a mistake declaring this early. Should have waited for another year. Now both of those guys gone to the NFL draft. And Aller hands off to Katron Allen, and he's stacked up with Deny Dennis Sutton in there with Amin Vandover making the tackle. Well, with all the questions at quarterback, a spot that is not a question mark is the running game. The sophomore running backs, Katron Allen and Nick Singleton. Yeah, what a great year they had, and they shared things, and they and they uh, they both had excellent seasons. Of course, Singleton was the rookie of the year in the Big Ten and everything, but uh, they both have great running skills. So the first third down for Drew Aller into a clean pocket and throws low looking for Amari Evans. 
And it'll be three and out for Aller in the blue offense on the opening drive of the game. Yeah, you'd like to see him just let that ball go. He just got to get back, set, feet, throw. Almost looked like he kind of aimed at that time. Well, that's what James Franklin was telling us yesterday is that the sudden movements and those subtle movements in the pocket are a strength of Valor, but didn't get into that throw. He's a big kid. He's six foot five inches, 240 pounds. He runs better than you think. There's a lot to like there. You just have to see more of him in game situations. Okay, so we tell you this is like a real game. That's with the exception of special teams. That was obviously on air. <laughs> with Riley Thompson putting it away. Well, everybody up early, still a good crowd with rain earlier, but clear now. Close to the 70s. It's been a great week in Happy Valley, and it's like the rain's going to steer clear for our window. Yeah, that's what they say. That, and all the people sitting under the overhangs uh, believe that. <laughs> Maybe not as much. I mean, they were taking cover two hours before a kick. Maybe they're shielding from the sun now. Maybe that's what they're going for. But first look at Bo Prabula. A redshirt freshman was the fourth stringer last year. And he throws, and that is intercepted. Oh, just kidding. That was not intercepted. That was Malik McLean. McLean at the wideout spot. He's another guy. Uh, in that competition right now to be the third wide receiver. Yeah, just a quick slant to the inside. Clayton does a nice job. He falls thrown outside. He just gets it with all hands. Well, Perbula in the blue jersey throwing to a guy in a white jersey. Yeah, that'll that's, mess you up. That's where the confusion comes in. He's leading the white team offense, and that ball's knocked out of there incomplete. Looking for Liam Clifford. Uh, coverage from Johnny Dixon, a guy that really popped in the practice film we watched this week. Uh, Johnny Dixon's a good football. Hit. This secondary, this defense, this secondary might be their strength. Nice coverage underneath by Jacobs and Dixon right there with the hit. He should have been caught. That's a ball he should have had, but the hit is what jarred that ball out. Uh, returning all Big Ten corner, Johnny Dixon. A couple of picks last year. Brings up third down for Prabula. He goes underneath, and that is broken up and incomplete. There's Daquan Hardy getting and his hands on. You are going to say, in all the sprint, in this, with this defense out there and the current personnel, they're all going to be contested throws. And Daquan Hardy was like that all last year. He had a great year. This whole secondary, in some ways, this might even be a better secondary than a year ago. They lost Jair Brown, and that's a big one to lose. And also Porter on the outside, but Porter was hurt for a bunch of the season, and a lot of these young corners got a lot of reps, and that helped a lot. This is an excellent secondary. Well, Manny Diaz, the defensive coordinator, he said, if we know one thing right now, we know we can cover, yeah. and they've got guys back there can, that can tackle, too. One thing that this defense for Penn State's going to have, and that's a Manny Diaz defense, is speed. They can run to the football. They're going to lack a little bit of size on the inside. Their defensive tackle spots aren't big. And they'll make up with that a little bit with the movement, which, by the way, is hard for an offense to get ready for when you're blocking speed all the time. So Drew Aller back out at quarterback after the blue team went three and out on the first drive. And Katron Allen to the edge, and he gets across midfield on a healthy first down game. Kevin Winston made the stop. Let's just talk a little bit about these running backs. You can see Singleton and Allen. I think Ken Single, Nicholas Singleton rather, and he came out. Just all he relied on was kind of a high school mentality is get to the outside and use your speed because he has great speed. Katron Allen, I felt like, was a better inside runner, had a little bit better feel. But here's the great news. Oh, nice big job there. And but, Allard did a nice job of pulling that thing and and taking it and advancing it for who knows where they're going to mark it. We'll give him three yards. Yeah. So third and two coming. But um, those those both those running backs, I thought Singleton got better as the season went on. He kind of he kind of adjusted to the, the college football game. Katron Allen I thought had a more natural feel for inside running. And they're both excellent runners. That's Allen off of the play fake. Adler rolls it and gets it to Katron Allen, and he's got the first down. 
A three and out for the blue team offense on the first drive. They convert on a third down to keep it rolling on drive number two. One thing I really liked about Kate John Allen I saw watching a lot of film from the spring and that was he's feisty man. He he's not going to go down without a fight. I, I like that in him. He stays in with Keandre Lambert Smith in motion on first down and ten. And Allen bounces through the car wash and gets a couple on first down. Well, it's interesting what you say about Allen having the more natural running skills because it was Singleton that was the Big Ten freshman of the year and had about 200 yards more. No, absolutely. It's he, and he bounced it. He has a great speed, right? But here with Singleton, initially he didn't quite believe his eyes. But as the season went on, to his credit, he got better in the inside run game and did less bouncing and relying on speed. Of course, in a Rose Bowl, he showed you what speed's all about. So I, this, is a, this is a great combination for this team. And the whole thing is reliant upon this offensive line. And they have great experience here in this offensive line. That's why things are looking up. We got Allen split out wide and a wide field throw for Adler. And he has it complete to Amari Evans. And he's two yards shy of the first down up to the 35 yard line. It's just uh, one of the things you're going to see, what you're seeing right now, because of the lack of experience that we've just talked about. You need to get these young quarterbacks short throws and get some some confidence. And so uh, you'll you'll probably see that at the beginning of the season. They're just going to throw underneath, occasionally take a shot, but not very often. They both have those big arms, but Allen's got the bigger one. Another third down, keeping it on the ground with Allen. And a second. First down of this drive, keeping it on the ground with Katron Allen to the 30 yard line. Well done, a nice job up front in that offensive line. See Tangwell on the inside. It's just, a, it's just a good group that they have right now. And they'll get better as they play because they'll get a feel for each other. And getting Olu Fashanu back Makes was a, a big deal. Yep. Starting left tackle. Would have been a first round pick in the NFL. Won't see much of him, if at all, today. Some of the other guys rolling up front, protecting Aller, who has it incomplete through the hands of Katron Allen, who would have had a touchdown. That would have been six. He'd have walked right in there. And he's got to know right there. And that's just experience. Again, you know, he he put a little bit too much mustard on that thing. There, Nicholas Singleton is now in has checked into the game. Looks for the arm strength for Aller was to the benefit of the defense instead yeah, of too Aller. Much, yeah. too, too much mustard right there. Got to take it off. And the Singleton checks in. Aller protected again and takes off again. He is not live. The quarterbacks are not live. The only guys that will not be full contact today. So you like to see him go through his reads. And right there, they just gave him man coverage. And so he tried to go down the field. That was taken away. He was going to, he looked to Singleton for his outlet, and that was being covered, so he, he ate it like he should. You like to see good decision making, and you want to be able to see quick decision making. And he'll gain all those things as he goes. And they gave him two on that, so a third down and eight with the blue team. Two of two on third downs on this drive. Aller going downfield, complete. Amari Evans inside the five, and he's in for a touchdown. The blue team on the board first with Amari Evans. Yeah, this is a nice job by Aller. He has the time in the pocket. That's the first thing. But look, he's looking outside. That's one, number one. Now he looks two inside, and then he comes back to his third option. And that third option is standing wide open. The defender fell, and he was able to get that for six. And now, will they have a penalty against the offense here? Yeah, there was a flag down in the end zone. Must must have been post. Yeah, they went post celebration play. penalty. Okay. So that penalty will be enforced on the extra point after the Evans touchdown. And Matt, that's one of the guys that Penn State has questions about is Amari Evans can he be that number three target well the one thing they do know about Evans is he can run the guy he's got good speed and 
you're going to get them to the inside on a route like that, and you're running in space, you got to take advantage of it, and Allard did. He can run and he can celebrate. He was the guy that was called <laughs> for the penalty. Yeah. He did everything fast. So special teams on air, and the extra point is through. So three third downs on that drive for the blue team, and Allard and the offense converted on all three. Just so the people at home are understanding, the blue team is the first team. The blue team offense is going against a second team defense, and the blue team defense is going against a second team offense, just so you know. And that goes to the coaching staff, too. Both coordinators are calling the plays for the blue team today. Yeah. You get that in the spring game, you get push ups for Amari Evans after he committed the penalty. <laughs> but good looking drive for Aller Evans. And the two lead backs to get seven. So Bo Perbula in competition with Adler back out. And this is where they really like him running the ball. And he'll get one yard to the edge on first down. Well, he has good speed. He has an ability to run. I'm going to remind you another number nine that played here a few years ago. Who was it? <laughs> well, they like him with the Tommy Stevens package. They like him in the, the Will Levis package. Just Trace but McSorley. Trace McSorley is the That's guy it. that the coaches keep talking about. Yeah, that, he, they look similar, especially with that nine, right? That's a smart play right there. Has the Deza Isaac right in his face. He knows he's not going to outrun him because he's going to have to get a big angle to get away from him. So just live for another down, dump it off, go to third down. Do you see that when when they make the McSorley comparison? Yeah, you can see it. He's a bigger McSorley. He's got a good arm. He runs around. I mean, he has the ability to move. What you want to be able to see again is, you know, you don't quarterbacks. You want to be a quarterback. You want to make throws. So he's got to get got to get into a rhythm here. We're facing a third down and 11. Rebula flushed. Flag comes flying, and that's incomplete. Uh, they're going to get a hard. Abdul Carter had a nice. Yeah, he just had a really nice pass rush to the inside. I don't know who they called it on him, um, but a nice job there by on the on the blitz. Daquan Hardy was out in coverage. A guy that can be used at corner and at nickel. Yeah. Abdul Carter came on that blitz to the inside and they just couldn't handle it. What a season he had a year ago. And with him Having a year of experience under his belt, you'll see a big step for him in his sophomore year. A returning freshman All-American, Penn State had three of those last year. Carter, along with Nicholas Singleton. So those are offsetting penalties. He had a hold, he had a pass interference. So we'll do the third down at 11 again for Prabula. Well, pressure came again. He was touched, but they play through on it, and he has a complete. Well, that should be a sack, and they will rule the sack. Yeah, looked like Abdul Carter again working against the guard, I think. It looked like a guard or a tackle. 51, that's Jimmy Chris. He was playing tackle the other day when we watched him. Abdul Carter, though, he's got some, he's got some pass rushing skills. Well, the returning freshman All-American, Abdul Carter, the sacks leader last year at six and a half. Brings up a fourth and 18 when we come back for the start of the second quarter in the blue white game. Blue white spring game for Penn State through a quarter. And it's the blue team with the touchdown from Amari Evans. That opened up that scoring in the first quarter. Now it's Prabula working with the other offense the starters and he hands off to Singleton around the edge and he gets a couple on first down before Kevin Winston gets to him. You were super impressed with what we've seen from Winston. It's easy to see why when you put the tape on Winston number 21 the safe the safety he makes all kinds of plays. That kid is all over the field. I think that you will see a lot of him this year. He's going to find his way into that lineup. His defensive backmate Jalen Reed thinks the same thing. He thinks he could be an All-American. Uh, Prabula again quarterbacks not live. We'll give him six on that. That's third down and two. Getting back to Winston, uh, you can see him right there, number 21. 
what he does very well is he's he's got a he's got a great body on him, right? And so when he comes down to fill a hole in the run game, it's filled. And then also he's got great range back there. He can get to spots most guys can't, and he's a smart player. But he has you combine all those three, you got a real chance. I really like what I've seen on film of him. He's the single high safety on third down and two here. Singleton gets through the hole. And it was an ankle tackle away from breaking that. Tamir Robinson had the shoelace tackle, but it's a first down. Well done by Robinson because if he doesn't get that, he's he's got great speed. I mean, we saw that a year ago. I mean, just went back and looked at that Rose Bowl again, and you saw when he when he broke away. I mean, he was just running away from people. And he's a big kid. He's 230 pounds, so you. You've got a kid who's got legit speed and power. Well, off of the play fake to Singleton. Prabula retreating has it complete to Dinkins. And the tight end shy of the 30 yard line before Winston makes another tackle. Looked like they went in man coverage there. Winston's playing free. You'll, you'll hear some guys on the team, you'll see, hey, they're playing one free. What that means is the safety all by himself, one single high safety. He's overseeing everybody else over the top. So he's your free man. Now Winston right up the hash at that safety spot on second down. We'll swing it out to Evans, the touchdown scorer earlier, and carves out space across the 30 and twists his way for a first down to the 25. Let's go down to Matt down on the sideline. Coach Mike Rhodes, coach, in 1994, you led a Lebanon Valley College team to a Division III national title. In 95, you were the Division III National Player of the Year. Fast forward to 2023, you are now the head basketball coach about 110 miles from where you went to school. What's this journey been like for you? Unreal, unreal, unbelievable people and relationships. And to get to this place, place I cheer for all my life, and to be the head coach, special, man. What can everybody here at Penn State expect to see from the basketball program now and moving forward? Well, we're always going to play hard, but we're going to be exciting and aggressive, and, and we're going to build this thing to win and win big. Nothing else. Absolutely. Well, Coach, we appreciate you having here. Congratulations, and we look forward to what basketball holds for Penn State 2023. You got it. Thanks. Mike Rhodes, during the quarter break, got his first chance to be down in the Beaver Stadium field and do the we are chant. Got the crowd going. <laughs> So a day of firsts on the football side and on the basketball side. Good to yeah, see Coach. Basketball team had a great, I thought I thought they had a great season this past season. And Mike Rhodes is gonna, he'll take it from there. So we'll see where this goes. Uh, Mari Evans had the big uh, touchdown in the first quarter. Had a long catch down the sideline. Set up first down and goal. This is Bo Prabula in competition with Drew Aller at quarterback. Now working with the blue team offense and going to the back shoulder and that's broken up incomplete. Uh, well, flag. well played by Storm Duck but maybe too well played. Yeah flag comes out on Duck. Yeah so Storm Duck they transfer from UNC North Carolina. That was excellent coverage. You stay to the top side and you have to play with your back arm. And uh, in that official's opinion he did not do that well. And it sounds like yours too. Yeah. Well, we'll take a look right here. Now he may he may have gotten a little push on him early. He's trying to go for that back shoulder. He did a nice job there. Trey Wallace. Now Prabula out to the edge with a fresh set after the penalty. And he's run out of bounds. Give him a half a yard. He kind of runs like Trace McSorley. Yeah. Kind of weird. I mean, he has the same kind of style. Now we need to find out if he scores here. Is he going to do the home run salute? Oh yeah, absolutely. I saw a little thing on. I don't know what it was. It was on a computer, so it could have been anything. I'm not real good on the computer. Could have been Twitter. Could have been TikTok. It was. It was McSorley's marriage, and he he did that thing with his bride. Yeah. How about we show that to you? This is on the old oh. Twitter machine. Yeah, that's what I saw. You must have seen it on Twitter. So of course that was the iconic uh, signature home run celebration when he was the quarterback here. Uh, got married on March 25th to his bride Casey and just perfect coming down the aisle for introductions. 
Hoffman just signed with the Patriots, too. I saw that. Bill O'Brien. Well, Penn State reunion in Foxborough. Well, Bill never offered him a scholarship. But James Franklin did at Vanderbilt, and then he switched it. And he went from Vanderbilt and came to Penn State. So Bill O'Brien picked him up, and he'll reunite him with uh, Jasicki in New England, yep. which will be interesting. Jasicki can catch anything. He just can't block to save his life. Uh, Alex Falcons will come out to try a short field goal here from about 21 yards out. So Adler with the touchdown throw to Amari Evans. Prabula getting to work with the first teamers now. What do you think of the drive he just put together? Yeah, so you can see the difference um, with an offensive line in front of you against a lesser talented defensive front. He had a little bit more time, made some throws. That's all you want to see. Make the right decisions, make the right throws. It ends up with points on the board for the blue team, leading 10 0. Uh, coming up later today, spring coverage continues. Michigan State has their football kickoff next, only on Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. That'll be the finale of the Big Ten schedule Penn State against Michigan State. So we've got quite a ways from April 15th to the end of November. <laughs> just, just a tad. Looking forward to this season, though. There's. There's a lot of great talent that's returning across this league. And of course, Penn State should be right in the thick of this thing, depending on how well this offensive line comes together and, of course, the quarterback play. And the third quarterback that we see is Jackson Smolik, and he hands off to Tank Smith. Keaton Ellis makes the hit right at the line. No game. I like Tank Smith. I liked him last year. He's 5'7, but he's 220 pounds. He's got quick feet and hole. He makes good decisions. Just, you know, there's two other guys that are pretty darn good ahead of you. That makes it tough. Now hard to crack that running back rotation. And you got Singleton and Allen. And some more help coming for Penn State, too. Trouble with the snap for Smolik, and he puts a knee down at the 15. He did the right thing. He slipped, but he did the right thing. You got to get down, live for another down. Smolik joining Prabula and Allard from Van Meter, Iowa, in the Des Moines area. He was a guy that Penn State got in late, didn't have an FBS offer at this time last year, then went to Elite 11, performed well there, and one of the Power Five offers came flown in last summer. Smolik trying to set up a screen, and that's broken up. Kalen King going over the top of an offensive lineman and it'll yeah. be fourth down. Here's Matt. Hey, I'm here with Coach Ertz. It's Coach, a uh, little over three minutes left here in the second quarter. What are your thoughts so far about today's practice? Well, you know, opening drive, you don't want to go three and out, so that's a big deal. That was emphasized. And then when we get the ball down there in the score zone, we got to come away with six points, not three. You've talked a lot about leadership so far this spring. Which guys have stepped up on this team about leaders? He's got to go. Uh, he's got to go call plays, guys. <laughs> I know, it's tricky. It's tricky, I know. That's a, it's tricky. Fair enough. Mike Yersich, year three is the offensive coordinator. Can't be mad at a guy for trying to do his job. No, that's funny, though. I like that. Yeah, hey, hey hold on. I, I got something to do over here. <laughs> he kind of played the, I can't hear you, I can't hear you. Wait a minute. I got to go call plays. Matt could Matt could have jumped right in. He could take it over. Not a big deal. Well, it's funny is that Yersich was telling us a story. He, he went to California here in Pennsylvania. He right. was a, a D3 quarterback. He said that their spring game in D3 was an alumni game, and they had guys as old as 50 years right. old. Exactly. In full pads to playing as 50-year-old guys in their spring game. Yeah, I, how, how would you like to have felt that after that game? If you're 50 years old and you're whacking some guys, forget it. I kind of looked across the table at you and McGloin and was thinking, get these guys some shells tomorrow. <laughs> that ain't happening, Holmes. No way. <laughs> well, you're such, uh, going back to work with the blue team offense. And it's Drew Aller back at quarterback. Uh, Aller, the five-star quarterback, was the, the backup to Sean Clifford last year. Won that job. Now trying to be the lead guy. Uh, Givry. And Singleton carves it out across the 50-yard line. First down gain of four. Let's try the other coordinator with Matt McGloin. 
I'm here with Coach Manny Diaz. Coach, 15th practice of the spring today. What are some of the things you've been really impressed with on your defense? The way they work, you know, bring it every day. Trying to get the, the, the basics right. Tackling, leverage, doing a good job of that today. Uh, keeping the ball in front of us, no big plays allowed. So, you know, it's just, you got to rebuild it every year. So you never assume anything. What about some of the things you guys need to improve upon? Well, obviously you're always looking for more depth, right? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have some new players coming in the summertime. Looking forward to getting those guys in the mix. And then leadership. We lost some great leaders off of last year's team, and uh, we need some guys to step up. Has anybody been able to do that so far this year, replacing a guy like Jair Brown, P.J. Mustafer, guys that have been in the program for a very long time? Which guys have your defense have stepped up? That's a big ask, you know, and that's not something that I think even these 15 days of spring is going to happen, you know, and in the, in the summer workouts, morning hills, in the weight room, I think that's where you'll see that leadership really start to settle in, emerge, and be ready for training camp. Thanks so much, Coach. He's right. That's 100%. But let me just tell you this right now. The players know who the leaders are before the coaches know. So Because there are guys you're going to listen to that the coaches may not even know. And sometimes it's a quiet voice and sometimes it's a louder voice. But true leaders, they'll step up and they'll know who to, the guys will know who to follow. And a lot of that's done with play, right? Yeah, a lot, some of it. Most of it, there's a trust factor to it. Trusting that you're going to make great decisions. Trusting that you're going to play hard all the time. You're going to do the things that are required and then some. That's third down and 13 for Adler in the blue team offense. Converted on three third downs. Last time Adler was at quarterback. He goes out wide to Dinkins, the tight end. And he stopped shy of the first down by Tony Rojas. That's a guy we are fascinated yeah. to see today. A January enrollee, Tony Rojas. Rojas, not a real big guy. Uh, they said he's gained 30 pounds, 29 pounds. I, mean, I put the tape on and I was like, where did he put it? Right. <laughs> this didn't, Still didn't flying look, around. Yeah, he can run. He really can run. He's got really good instincts. It's rare for a young player to believe their eyes. So when you see something, you do something. Most guys hesitate in between. He's pretty quick. Aller got half of the yardage on third down and on fourth down. Throws it incomplete for Caden Saunders. Caden Saunders is a player they'd like to see take a step because he's got great abilities. I think he did some really nice things. You can see these backers who are coming back. Carter King, Jacobs, and then Rojas and Tamir Robinson. Both those guys are skilled enough to be able to fit into that rotation. They just have to just get some experience. Well, you've also got uh, last year's starting Mike linebacker, Tyler Elsden. Right. They'll bring him in. I like the speed of these linebackers. It's you could see it on tape. I mean, they they cover people up inside with a lot of movement. And then these backers, they they just flow. They run really well. Now, Prabula back at quarterback. A little two minute situation for Prabula. Roll in the pocket and throws it incomplete. All right, so you're a minute down in the first half. And what we haven't seen out of either quarterback is accuracy or consistency. And so and that usually comes at the end, right? First, you want to master the system itself, understand where you're going with football, understand the defense and what they're doing. And then you have to be able to, when the guy's open, you have to make that throw. So, Some of that having to do with the guy that was just pictured, Abdul Carter, that yeah. got him off the edge a couple of times. It's funny how that works. When somebody's chasing you, you know, that was a smart move right there. Instead of taking the sack, he just let it go, live for another down. That was smart by Prabula. Well, I know this is a vanilla as far as coverages and plays today, but seeing Carter off the edge and the time Kobe King from Mike got in the face of Perbule. Yeah, so what you what it may be basic, but you know, there are basic blitzes, and if you don't block them, you got a problem. Anytime you got a free guy coming, that's an issue. Uh, and Perbula did not clear the pocket there. So they called intentional grounding, loss of downs. We'll make this third and very long with no yardage yet in this two minute situation. So it has to be at or beyond the line of scrimmage and you have to be outside the tackle box if he was not outside the tackle box in their in their opinion. So they they flag. You got to get to the plus 41 here. On third down and tank Smith up the middle and then he gets a yard will be fourth down with the clock rolling. 
Yeah, I don't think that's a very strategic, a very good military strategic uh, deal right there. When you need a lot of yardage, you go with the tank. That doesn't really doesn't work, does it? I was thinking you need him and Storm Duck in an Oklahoma drill. <laughs> tank, tank Smith against Storm Duck is the dream Oklahoma drill. Tank versus Duck. You need a nice rainy day for that one. Almost had a day for Duck. <laughs> Raining leading in. The people are rolling their eyes at home. You know that. Of course. <laughs> but that's not the last time they've heard that about Storm Duck. Good point. Cornerback that came in from North Carolina. So blue team offense will come back out. Drew Adler you know, threw the touchdown pass to Amari Evans late in the first quarter. And the one timeout left for the blue team. Let's see if they can move the ball here. White team couldn't with Perbula. This drive will start at the 35 yard line, so 65 yards to get for six. It'll be Allen flanking, flanking Aller coming back out for one final drive, most likely in this first half. Haven't really seen anything past a 10 yard throw. Tried one earlier um, going the opposite way, but that was about it. In the final minute of the first half, Aller off balance and he hit his check down, but it was off his check down, incomplete, looking for Katron Allen. Yeah, I think uh, Katron Allen almost hit that umpire, or the ball hit the umpire, one of the two. Yeah, so he got Denny Sutton was able to get there. Yeah, so they will count the tag down for Dennis Sutton. Returning freshman All-American at three sacks last fall. Sets up second and 15. And Adler over the middle and incomplete. Makai Flowers almost picked it off in the deflection. And third down and long for the blue offense. Not uh, able to step up, and he threw it behind him because he saw the defender closing. That receiver's got to slow down a little bit, but that's not a wise throw on the inside. You're right about <laughs> Rojas, though. He, yeah. He's buzzing, no, Rose, even with the weight gain. He can run. Yeah. <clears throat> third and 15 for Aller. Back over the middle, wobbling, and it's complete. Got it out across midfield for a first down to Caden Saunders. Saunders does a nice job of waiting for that ball and coming back to it as uh, Aller got hit, lost his feet in the process. Inside a half a minute, and Aller gets it to his check down, Allen, and racing for the sideline, and he is upended. Just shy of the first down. That's smart. Allen knew he had to get out, and he got there. So stop the clock with 18 seconds left. It'll be second and short. So what's concerning if you're a Penn State fan right now is this is the first team offensive line and they're getting pressure against the second team defensive front. As I said, they, they still have to get together up front. They have to gel. That hasn't happened. Well, they did give him the spot. So Allen did get to the sticks. First down inside the 40-yard line. Aller with pressure, dumps it off again. And Allen trying to go over the top. And he gets clipped by Elliott Washington. True freshman January enrollee from Venice, Florida. Katron Allen should be told never do that in a practice, ever. But that's instinct taking over. Oh, great oh, catch. Final play of the first half. Tyler Johnson with a diving catch. It's a great catch. He laid out, reached and grabbed it. Excellent job. Unfortunately, that's the end of the half. Look at this catch. Oh, that's beautiful. I don't know. Did he hang on to that thing or not? I can't really see from that angle. They said he did. Give him a clean catch. That'd be a tough one. Who knows what he's doing right there. Let me see this again. If we get this in slow motion. He dives. Has his hand. He may, tra he may have trapped that. But it looks nice. We'll give him a catch. Looks nice, and they marked the spot at the five-yard line, so officials Great will, effort. Will, will give him the catch. Great effort. 
Replay would not have upheld it though. It was a quick first half. Sure was that running running clock with the blue team up 10 nothing at the half. Here's Matt McGloin back down in the field. Uh, coach, coach, the rain has held off so far for you. What are your thoughts on that first half? Yeah, deny Dennis Daniels is playing really well. Omari Evans is playing really well, which is great to see those two guys. So uh, that's been a positive. We had rain all morning and it cleared up, so that's been good. We're getting really good work in the stadium. Obviously, this will be really good film for us to evaluate to get better, to use this for learning for West Virginia to start the season. Which groups, which battles, which competition should we pay close attention to here in the second half? Well, that third wide receiver is going to be important. Depth at D tackle is going to be important. Um, you know, and then obviously when you talk about on the defensive side of the ball, all the reps that Kobe's been getting the middle linebacker has been excellent, but it'll be really good when we get Elsden back. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Well, stats have anything to say about that third wide receiver competition Amari Evans with a good endorsement to be that number three guy he had the only touchdown in the first half at wide out putting the blue team up 10 nothing through a half for the biggest Big Ten experience there is no plus like home the Big Ten plus app powered by Big Ten Network download and subscribe Right now, it's halftime at the blue-white game, 10-0 blue team. But looking back to last fall, Penn State finished the third in the East standings, losses to Michigan and Ohio State at 7-2. And, and high hopes that they can get to the top of the East, get to the championship game and the college football playoff with all that they bring back this year. A lot of the reason for that hope is how they finished the season out in Pasadena at the Rose Bowl. First Rose Bowl win since 1995 and it was the two big plays in the second half it was tied 14 14 21 unanswered starting with Nick Singleton on the ground 87 yards in the third quarter and then it was an avalanche for Penn State offensively the rest of the way ended up winning it by two scores this was to start the fourth quarter Keandre Lambert Smith 88 yards one of the longest plays in Rose Bowl history and Penn State just after the new year Gave everybody reason for optimism for 2023 and sent Sean Clifford off in a great way. Halftime, the blue-white game, back after this. Lots of Big Ten players across the USFL. A lot of Wisconsin Badgers for Pittsburgh. We have five Wisconsin Badgers and uh, a little mixed bag across the rest of the way with Philadelphia. You got Iowa. Michigan, Michigan State, and Purdue reps with the USFL season again kicking off tonight, 4.30 Eastern with a doubleheader on Fox. Blue-white spring game, halftime. Blue team with the only touchdown and the only points. Amari Evans from 28 yards. In the middle of April, rain has cleared. A little sunshine has peaked out in the first half. Uh, the blue white spring game Connor Onion Matt Millen Matt McGloin down in the field today and we are 140 days away from the opener starts with West Virginia back to back home games to get it started before the Big Ten opener at Illinois. Yeah I think what we saw a year ago in the Big Ten is that Illinois stepped up to the plate a little bit Iowa is always solid Northwestern had a little bit of a down year but uh, that's a tough schedule I and mean, it's not going to be easy. Rutgers has gotten better. Michigan State had a down year, but they'll be better this year. Maryland's right there. Ohio State's always Ohio State. Michigan's always Michigan. So not an easy schedule, but they never are. October 21st, November 11th, they're definitely the headliners, though. Yeah, I mean, that's any time you're going to be playing Ohio State and Michigan. And then so they, they threw a Massachusetts in there just to kind of give you a little break, but sometimes those games sneak up on you if you're not ready. I'll tell you who, who was ready uh, for this spring game is Penn State secondary on both sides the blue and the white. We've had some excellent play out of the secondary. The white team didn't have a first down in the first half. Yeah and it, uh, that was the second team you'd expect that to happen against your first team defense. But um, I thought the quarterbacks both looked average. However having said that I think Pribula probably settled down a little bit more than did uh, than did Alar. 
Well, those are the numbers. Prabula went both ways. Adler was completely with the blue team. Prabula was white team and blue team in that first half. It's going to take some time. They're still learning. What is it they said? Yersich said yesterday that uh, Clifford's superpower was his knowledge of the offense and understanding what guys can do. That takes time. That's a lot of experience. Of course, that was his sixth year. So, I mean, I thought he was a, three, a third year all pro. I, that's what I told him last year. <laughs> I don't think he liked it. <laughs> well, he's, he's 24. Sean Clifford's 24. He's handing it over to one of those two guys yeah. that are 19 year olds. So there's a difference in age and obviously an experience in actually playing. Right. It, it takes time. That's, that's all it is. You just, you need experience. Well, it was Drew Aller that had the one touchdown throw in the first half. He found Amari Evans. And he had time. Because he had time, he was able to go one, two, three, hit his third option. You can see right here. So when you have time like that, your offensive line does its job well, you're going to have some nice things that can happen. Evans did have some experience last year, but a relative unknown, especially in the Big Ten. Only five catches for 55 yards, and then he goes for four catches, 61 in the spring game. Well, the one thing, you and you heard Coach Franklin say it at halftime, they're looking for that that next guy, that that third receiver. You're thinking that Cephas kid is going to do that, but you still need more. You don't know what happens with injuries. You don't know what happens. You know, sometimes you just need a guy. And so uh, they'll have to find him. Dante Cephas will join the team this summer. Kent State transfer, the pretty electric game against Maryland's Big Ten opponent last year. He's officially signed his paperwork and he'll be here in the summer. So Prabula and the white team offense come out first to begin the second half. And after the white team didn't have any first downs in the first half, against that secondary that's been flying around both ways for Penn State. A little pressure. Prabula out of there again, and that was a lot like what we saw in the first half. Yeah. On the move with pressure in his face. Yeah, he had to get out of there fast. They're, they're bringing Abdul Carter, who had a great first half. They brought Carter to the inside. He saw the pressure, got outside, and be able to throw it away, live for another down. But in a regular game, it's fine to do that, to live for another down, but there's sometimes you run out of downs. So it lives for second down. And a run play. Emil Davis out of an ankle tackle. Turns ahead to the 33 yard line. But we were watching some practice tape yesterday. Yeah. And going back to that first play of this drive, Zane Duran, you were talking about how he can really he run. Can he was close to the quarterback he, on that first play. And he can get off the ball quick. I'm, I love that first step. First step is the difference. And you're going to watch him on the, on the inside. He's got some nice size to him, but he can really go. The bottom of your screen couldn't get home that time. Prabula has it complete, and it's out for a first down to Malik Mega. Nice crossing route. He's able to have a little bit of time, makes that throw. Put it right where he's supposed to. Mega does a nice job of making that catch and picking the first down up. And, um, I think the thing you're going to see with Manny Diaz's defense, you saw it last year, there's a lot of pressures they bring. They give you a lot of movement. Uh, they have great speed. And so when you have that combination, that's the right kind of uh, uh, defensive scheme to run. Chop Robinson with the tackle. Here's Matt. Guys, I'm here with one of the best to ever do it at Penn State, Jahan Dotson. Jahan, what's it like being back at Beaver Stadium? It leaves me speechless, honestly. Just walking in here, you know, enjoying the fans. It, literally the best fans in the country and being in the loudest, the loudest, the loudest place in the country. It's, it's literally awesome. I, I'm literally losing words just thinking about being in here and just enjoying the moment. You're entering year two with Washington. What would you say that adjustment will be like from year one and now heading into year two? Yeah, you know, going through the hamstring injury, you know, that was the first time I've really had an injury in my career. So just dealing with that, going through the highs and lows of it all, and just, just learning from every moment, you know, going into year two, just trying to make sure that I'm being better in every single 
step of the step of the way. So making sure I take care of my body, um, learn from the guys that are ahead of me, and just try to be as productive as possible. You mentioned learning. What are some of the things you've learned from James Franklin, his staff, and and being a member of this university? Yeah, just the discipline. You know, it takes you a long way. Um, just coming in here, we have a brotherhood here. It's, it's truly like no other in the country. Um, having those guys on my team, Tariq Castrofield, Shaka Tony, Troy Apke, having those Penn State guys on the team as well helps, you know. So being around those guys and just realizing the culture that we had here it just carries over to the NFL. Absolutely. Jahan, best of luck moving forward. Thank you. Matt, thanks. Thanks to Jahan Dotson joining us too. So um, Jahan Dotson here from Nazareth High School back in the Lehigh Valley in Pennsylvania. Had the best hands I've seen of any receiver out of Penn State and really in, in the I've been, I've been around this league for a while in the NFL that guy's got some great hands strong hands he runs great routes the smart football player and they miss him and they still use him as an example he came up several times oh, in yeah. our meeting yesterday when talking about the third wide receiver battle they got going on nice run right there nice break to tackle been able to Gain another nine yards. Is he's going to set up what third and two maybe? Uh, Fourth Mille, and two. Neil Davis got hit by Wheatley at the end and tore part of the 30 off the back of his jersey. We'll be two yards short. We'll be fourth and two. Yeah, just just watching this kid and he does a nice job. Watch him in spring in the in the scrimmages. Prabula and the offense stay out. And David okay. squirts out of there and he's got a first down. Great second effort. Working off the first hit. Heck. I, it's easy to see why they like him. Again, he's there's those other two guys that just are tough to play. Get some playing time. We've seen some good things from Tank Smith in yeah. short yardage and Emil Davis, who's in there now. A the guy that started at Marist College, non scholarship FCS football player. Turned a Big Ten football player. That's a good, and he's a good player. I mean, he's got some game to him. Prabula with a quick set on first down and an inaccurate out to the flank. Incomplete. Looking for Christian Driver, second down. Christian Driver's, a, of course, his dad played for the Packers. He's a good football player as well. I mean, and you know when you have your dad who's a, who's a receiver in the NFL, you're going to learn a couple of tricks. James Franklin said about Christian Driver yesterday. He is all twitched up. Good genes yeah. for him. Packers all-time leading receiver, Donald Driver's kid. Uh, Davis will not get to the edge. Chop Robinson has the tackle for a loss. Yeah, Robinson's right there. What a difference he made coming to coming to this defense. Gave you the pass rush on the other side and solid in the run game. Just a good football, good, good, solid football player. Of course, Kobe King was right there as well. Kobe King's been playing outstanding. Just fun to watch him. Uh, King at uh, the middle linebacker spot will have a big help up front with those four. Uh, very deep defensive line room. Uh, Prabula is taking a shot incomplete from McLean. Uh, you were calling for a deep ball. Yeah. Got one. McLean couldn't run it down though. I would like to see a deep ball completion. That would be better. Thanks for getting more exact. With yeah. Us. So I think the people who came here today, you know, so I'm going to be a fan right now, right? So people who came here and wanted to see what these quarterbacks are going to look like, and you're excited to see, hey, let's let's get a little rhythm going, and see what you can happen, and we haven't seen that. And so and there's reasons for it, and you don't want to get down on anything because it's, they're just young. But you'd like to be able to see a little bit more than what we're seeing out of these quarterbacks. Well, that was the big story with Sean Clifford moving on. Drew Aller, Bo Prabula. But Manny Diaz, Penn State's defensive coordinator, he told us a story about the start of his career at Florida State. Uh, he was a young assistant. <laughs> yeah. Their spring game in 1999 finished 3 0. Florida State got booed off the field because <laughs> they came to see offense. Down there in Florida, and what happened? They won the national championship. There. Yeah, with defense, great defense. Drew Aller back at quarterback. 
And hands off to Singleton. And he gets two yards on first down with a long field here for the blue team. Yeah, there's a lot to like about Nick Singleton. He's has power. He's got great speed. But what he really developed on his runner's patience to the inside game, letting things develop a little bit. As I mentioned it earlier, as the season went on, he got to be a better runner. Just like that. Great patience staying behind his, his blocker in front of him, using the people. That's just really well done. The Big Ten freshman of the year, he set the Penn State freshman touchdown record with 12. He's got, you can see the speed, he'll run away from people. And then, that's just nice vision. That's called running with your eyes. When you see it, you get to it. Sometimes people try to force things and they don't get them. When you have a little bit of runner's patience, it shows up for you. They got through the first arm tackle, and Singleton moves the chains on third down. Oh, we just heard Matt McGloin with one of the best in Penn State history, Jahan Dotson. Singleton got a lot of Saquon Barkley record watch type recognition last year. Yeah. Uh, had almost double the touchdowns of Barkley when he was a freshman here. My brother, who's right down the hall here, he, he coached Saquon in high school. And I remember when he was a, uh, he was just a sophomore. And my brother came over to my home and we were speaking. And he said, hey, we got a kid who's a sophomore. He can run. Nobody can tap. He's unbelievable. And I said, well, how many yards does he have? And he said, well, he's behind the senior. He's not playing. <laughs> I said, well, that's great coaching. <laughs> right. He's great, so why is he not playing? <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, so. Nicholas Singleton. He's prime time. I'd get rid I wouldn't even put him in anymore. He's not going to prove anything. But that kid, he's got he's gotten better. And that's saying a lot with the success that he had a year ago. It's Katron Allen spelling him in the backfield. Aller on second down. And Good pace. throws a tight ball in there, but it's incomplete. And what did you see right away? Tight coverage again. Yep. This both these secondaries. That's Storm. No, that's not Storm. That's uh, Lamont Payne. Payne. Uh, Storm's 29, Duck. But that, look, you, you're seeing they're right on every. They're right on the uh, receiver's hips, right where you're supposed to be. Nobody's running away from anybody. They're just lining up and saying, "Beat me," and they're not doing it. Well, Lamont Payne, January enrollee, getting his first taste of Beaver Stadium today. Sets up a third down. Aller stepping out and around. He's got Evans again, who's become a favorite target of both Aller and Prabula. His fifth catch of the day moves the chains. That's a heck of a throw, to be honest with you. And he was getting pressure, and it's just going to be all arm. He's going to go to his right here. You're going to see this right here. That's just all arm. He's not able to step into it, and it's right where it's supposed to be. That's really well done. Nice throw. The final seconds of this third quarter. No scoring in this third quarter yet. 10 nothing blue team at halftime. Evans the only touchdown scorer. Aller up there changing the play and goes to a run and let's go nowhere. Tank Smith snowed under at the line. And Kevin Winston in there up from safety leading another surge with denied Dennis Sutton. He's been a star today for Penn State. Yeah, he's been all over the place. That movement defense suits him well. Uh, Diaz, Manny Diaz, the defensive coordinator, has his guys buzzing around a scoreless third quarter in the blue-white spring game from State College. Spring football on the Big Ten Network is presented by the USFL. The USFL season kicks off today at 4.30 Eastern on Fox. Back with Matt Billen, Connor Onion, Matt McGloin down on the sidelines. We go to the fourth quarter in the blue-white game that is absolutely moving. Running clock, not a lot of scoring. 10-0 blue team through three quarters. We the blue team offense out to start the fourth with Drew Aller at quarterback. On second and 12, Aller out of the pocket. 
And has nice. that complete. Saunders through a tight window. Has a first down across midfield. Smart throw. Moving to his right. He takes Saunders back to the inside, away from the defender. Just well done. You can see he's going to have to get out of the way. And now he has Saunders here coming back, so he throws it away. See the defender breaking on him to the top side. Good throw. So two throws on the run for Aller on this drive for first downs. He has the blue team in plus territory. It looks like he's settled down now a little bit. He's got a first and ten with Tank Smith in the backfield. Oh, Shets nice a tackle, feet. then another. And into the secondary across the 35 with a first down for yes. Tank Smith. Tank Smith had some nice feet right there two times. It made you miss on the second tackle. He was able to pick up that first down. It's really well done. Not just a two-man room back there in the running back room. No, it got some skills right here. That's really well done. And there. That's good job. Nice, nice running. So back-to-back -back first downs for the blue side. One for Smith on the ground, one for Aller through the air. And blue team looking for the first points of the second half. And Tyler Johnson on the sweep, and he's not getting to the edge. Zariah Fisher set that edge and contained was not broken. Not even close. Zariah Fisher, and he just, uh, like it was his job right there. He just... <laughs> Did a nice job. Look, he's going to have the discipline. Don't let your eyes get beat, right? Look for what you have to. Deep is the deepest. You see it coming. You stay with it. Just make that play. Well done. Fisher battled injury last year. Didn't play until November. Has played some snaps for Penn State. Going to the fall with 11 career games played. After the loss, Aller has his pass knocked down. There's Tony Rojas showing up again. He knocks the pass down to make it third down. Not a big kid, active kid. Sees things well. He's had good instincts. We might have to get him up to Brother's Pizza up there in Stormstown. And Antoinette can give him a pizza. We can get some more pounds on him. Could have joined us at Highway last night. Yeah, the, college oh, no, we were at Brother's. We ended up the Stormstown area up there. You were. I was. I dumped you some suey. Uh, all I needed was some suey peppers to dump on top of that pizza. It would have been gorgeous. Well, that's the rumor on what Rojas has been doing. A lot of that. Uh, Saunders has it off. His hands incomplete. Missed him. Uh, that Allar had a chance right there. He had the open receiver. Got to make that throw. You see the arm strength. You see the ease and how it comes out. Accuracy hasn't always been there today. No. And he's gotten some pressure. Some of it's legit, and some of it, after you get pressure, you think there's more pressure than there is. So, again, that's just a young guy, and he's just, just getting settled. Mike Yersitz, the offensive coordinator, will keep him out there on fourth down and 14. Aller steps up, goes underneath, back to Smith, and fighting for the chains, and he'll be stacked up short. Needed the 23, got to the 26. As Jackson Pritz made the stop, and it's a turnover on downs. Had to throw back underneath. They took away, and that's that's what you do defensively. Manny Diaz said, "Look, we're going to not give you anything deep. We're going to make you to make you throw it underneath, and then we'll come up and make the play." And got some pressure again from Sutton, Danny Sutton, and uh, Danny Dennis Sutton. Been playing well all game long. He was mentioned walking off the field with yeah. Matt McGloin from James Franklin. Yep. Well, Prabula will be back at quarterback. And Adler still with the only touchdown pass in this game from the two quarterbacks, battling it out after Sean Clifford's four year career came to a close in the Rose Bowl. And faked it underneath. Prabula going to the <laughs> sideline and knocked down incomplete. Abdul Carter thought he had something there. You're going to watch Carter in this play, what he does. He sees right from the beginning, they ran pressure. I mean, uh, they had motion to the outside. He went and chased it down to the outside. And then when he saw him starting to take off and run, he backtracked. See, he came back, looked like he was going to have a chance to make a pick. Great play. Now, Prabula back to the air, and that's incomplete. That was kind of a casual knockdown after Carter made the read. 
Probably could have turned around and picked it off. Yeah, it was a, it was a great, great run, um, uh, great coverage by him. Uh, Manny Diaz, his defensive coordinator, described him succinctly. He said, Abdul Carter, he's a missile. Pretty good way to put it, huh? Yeah, when they, especially when they start blitzing him, that's what he excels. He's got a good, some guys have a good feel for it, and some guys not as much. He's one of them who does. Prabula, all that dancing, and he's tripped up inside the 15. With Zane Durant right there, boxing he him He was. In. Zane Durant was right on him. And Prabula felt that. Zane Durant can run. Yeah, they both slipped. <laughs> that's, a, that's a quarterback, again, that Penn State has talked about. Potentially some Tommy Stevens or Will Levis type packages because he can run. Yeah. But that was step for step from a defensive lineman there. He weighs. What is he? What do they list him at? Let's see. Durant? Yeah. Uh, 275. 6'1, 275. So if he's 275 pounds, that's moving pretty darn good. Yep. Well, hey, July 15th in Chicago at Soldier Field, the BTN Big 10K is back. 10K and 5K races and a tailgate party. You can scan the QR code or register right now at btnbig10k.com. Running days behind you? I know when you played for Coach Paterno, you were not a fan of conditioning tests. Well, I never understood why they wanted you to run a mile and a half because it, you don't have to run, you only have to go 100 yards at the most. You do that, the guy scored if you're exactly, playing Exactly, that's what I told him. If I could have chased a guy a mile and a half, he's going to score. No reason to run a mile, yeah. <laughs> so 5Ks. Uh, he didn't find the humor in that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. Probably made you go run a mile and a half after that. Uh, I had to do it three times. Well, me and Andover had the tackle there, one of those guys in the Defensive line that James Franklin has talked about adding depth to the group after PJ Mustafer moves on. Yeah, they they're going to miss Mustafer's size. They're going to miss his first quick steps. He was able to hold things up inside, and he was he was a tough defender. They don't have that type of player right now. Yeah, looking forward, especially on the interior after Mustafer leaves. Nice twisting catch for Tank Smith. There's Tony Rojas into the flat. Making the open field tackle. Dennis Danny Sutton was right there again. Came off the edge. He beat the tackle. Looked like he had, looked like he was going to have the sack. I don't know how he got out of there. Oh, he missed the foot. Nice catch by Tank on the back side there. Well, denied Dennis Sutton was not a bit shy about stating his goal of having the Penn State career sacks record. That's 33. Long way to go. Dennis Sutton had three sacks last year, but freshman All-American season. And Prabula down the field, and that's complete to Saunders inside the 25 for a first down. Yeah, that was a nice job of standing in the pocket, but again, under pressure. He got the pressure. He was able to make the throw. Allard does a nice job. This is just an all-arm throw. So Aller and blue team offense move it down to the 25 yard line on first and 10. Off of the fake Aller gets it out on the sidearm to Saunders but the rally is coming. So you see that throw that was a short stop right there. Yeah. I mean he was that's a heck of a throw. That's just kind of almost sidearm underhand. Because that's the only place you could go, so that's where he throws it. That's really well done. Only way to get it there around Tamir Robinson. Exactly. Only got a yard out of it as we dip inside three minutes. Clock will stop under the two minute mark. The defense highlighting the second half. No points either way yet. Uh, Adler goes underneath, has it complete. Anthony Ivey makes the catch inside the red zone to the 18-yard line. Here's what's here's what's a, a concern. 
I haven't seen these quarterbacks not have pressure. I mean, there's somebody in his face all the time. That's got to change. Yep. Yeah, again, you, you, you don't see Olu Fashano today, the projected first round pick who did come back at left tackle. But part of this. But as a collective, you said it this week, you said it today, you want to see more for the rest of that group. Yeah, absolutely. You want to see some consistency. And they, again, they they got to get on the same page. Back to Anthony Ivey looking for the corner. And he gets the first down inside the 10-yard line. First and goal for the blue offense. Just playing a simple zone. They're going to let you throw underneath, and that's exactly what they they take what they've been given. Matt, this is what you're talking about. The, yep. the offensive line group it didn't turn over a ton of guys. They lost center Juice Scruggs. Bryce Effner was kind of a swing man. Right. They, they bring back a lot of experience uh, highlighted by Fashanu at the top. Yeah, so Norzad goes to center for Scruggs, and then they, they'll they have Fashanu on, on one tackle. It, it's it's going to be a different lineup than it was a year ago, and it'll be different than it is right now. Oh, he missed that one. He had Saunders, too, and he was, instead of flattening it out, he tried to lead him a little bit too much. And he kind of missed on that one. Well, you're always curious with the, the spring game. Sometimes it's not always full contact, but today, James Franklin has, has let the guys in the trenches run a little bit. Hasn't been patty cake like you see sometimes yeah. in these situations. Yeah, so and, and right now they're under it's a minute 23 to go, so they're gonna play the the two minute rules. So uh, Aller rolls out and had it on the hands of Saunders that time, but incomplete. Yep. And it's third down. Saunders needs to make that catch. That's exactly where the ball should be. It's actually a good job of a good offensive call to get him out in the flat and give him some give him some throwing space and Takes advantage of it and of course the drop. One more chance to see Allard down here in the red zone on third down and goal. He'll empty it out. Smith flanked out, top side of your screen. Looks like they're gonna try to bring pressure again from the top side with that backer. Here yep, he comes. And Chismar creeping, he does come. Get out of there. Allen does look. get out. Had his man in the flat, goes end zone instead and broke it up. Good defense. Makai Flowers makes another play out of the air and it's fourth down. Both these secondaries, I think, today with the difference. They they have played exceptionally well. Good secondary play. They've gotten good pressure at, at times the both defensive lines. It's a fourth down and are gonna go for it. Three straight incompletions since that quick hitter to Ivy got him on first and goal. And from the nine yard line, Aller had the touchdown pass in the first half. No scoring since then. Here come numbers again up front, underneath, out to Ivy, nope. and seeking the goal line. Can't get there. Looked like Scott Fitzke in 1978 against Alabama. One yard short. And it turned away by Flowers and Rojas again. <laughs> uh, Not quite Fitzke, but. Well, but Fitzke, he'll, he'll, he'll hear about that, though. <clears throat> Good defense again. This has been great defense all game long. I think, I think both these secondaries have played very well. Might have actually been two yards short. Thank God his knee was down at the two. Ah, well, it sounded better one. You know, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Your, your Fitzky comparison doesn't <laughs> quite work, but it's two yards short. <laughs> so, Bo Perbula back out at quarterback on the white team side. A minute 06 with 98 yards to get, and that is knocked down. Pressure again. Devon Ellis got a hand on him. Let's go down to Matt. 
Yeah, guys, well, first, I'm glad the rain held off. I knew you were going to be nice and warm up in that booth, but I was expecting some rain down here on the sideline today. <laughs> yeah, uh, you we, were prepared with no, that. We had pon Absolutely. poncho ready for you. Absolutely. No, Matt, what's, think, your, what's your, you know, what's your things. What's your take on this? Yeah, exactly. One of the things I think everybody was looking forward to seeing today was the competition at the quarterback position. And I think at times you certainly saw flashes from both of these guys. Pabuel made a great throw to Dinkins earlier in the game where he was drifting back, had pressure in his face, gave him a nice soft throw that promoted run after the catch. And when you look at some of the throws and, and decisions that Drew Allar has made today, you can see he's going through his progressions. You can see he understands defenses. He understands Mike Yurcich's system. But the one thing that's going to be able to separate Perbula or it's going to be able to separate Drew Allar is going to be consistency. One of these guys needs to find it moving forward. And I think, guys, one of the things you got to remember as well, there's a ton of talent, obviously, on the defensive side of the ball, but you have depth at the offensive line position. You arguably have one of the best one-two punches at the running back spot in America. There's talent at the tight end spot, and there's talent at the wide receiver position. All these quarterbacks need to do is be able to play their game and do what Mike Yurcich asks out of them. I think that's how they can find success moving forward. I agree with you, Matt. I, I'm going to look for more consistency out of the offensive lines. And we've talked about that before, and, and it's not easy in the spring in the spring to be able to do that, but they're going to have to be able to do that going forward. This is Perbula on the field here, and Holdsworth has the completion. Good gain on first down. Uh, Matt McGloin, for you, you talked about the receivers. Uh, what did you learn today about that competition for the third wideout spot? Well, I, I think we knew you had a guy like Keandre Lambert-Smith, Trey Wallace, who, you know, have been able to separate themselves in terms of being that number one, that number two wide receiver. But behind them, I mean, it seems like you can have maybe four or five guys looking at that third and fourth spot, Liam Clifford, Omari Evans, right, McLean. Don't forget, you have Dante Cephas joining this program in the summer. So there's certainly no shortage of talent. But I think what James Franklin needs to do, what Mike Yurcich needs to do, is find exactly where those guys fit into this system, where do they fit into this offense, and where can they help this team move forward. And also, guys, remember, you do have two young quarterbacks again, right? How can they help those guys develop, and how can they help those guys get better? And Dante Cephas will come in from Kent State. And join the team in the summer. Flag is out on the second and one as Perbula fires incomplete. And I get the call down to the field with 23 seconds left in the fourth. With that uh, third wide receiver conversation ongoing, Amari Evans uh, looks like he'll close his day. Five receptions, 80 yards, and a touchdown. So spring stats are spring stats, but. We saw some things from Evans today that have to make you happy if you're a Penn State fan. Yeah, absolutely. I, there's always going to be something <clears throat> you know, you're going to take away from this game. And this is just one game out of 15 practices, right? So it's but it's great experience. And that's exactly what a lot of these guys need. Perbula onto that back foot throws it away. He didn't get outside the pocket. Flag didn't come out. Chop Robinson was in his face. Theme of the day, pressure up front. Yeah, which again, theme of the day, the offensive line's got to protect. That's to me, that's that's all football. When you have a good offensive line, you've got a pretty good team. At the very least, you'll be getting to a scoring thing. Uh, Prabula underneath, got it to his tight end, Jerry Cross. First down across midfield. Still down to 13 seconds, and they're going with the hurry up here. And the chains get set, and Perbula kills it. So 12 seconds to get points before the blue-white game ends. Got to take a shot here someplace. We were watching seven-on-seven seven segments yesterday. It was, as you called it, fade segment. Yeah, they, they were throwing a bunch of deep balls <laughs> practice this week in the seven on seven. You know that's in there. Not a lot of completions, however. 
And right now, this defense with the secondary, they're playing too deep, and they're they're giving them 10 yards. So they'll take the 10 yards, just keep them in bounds, and that should run the clock out. They don't have any more timeouts. On the top side, you got Cross with all that cushion. He goes to the other side and Pick. throws it intercepted. Yeah, there you go. So that will seal it. Jay Sean Green with the interception. And the blue team's going to win it. Yeah, right from the start, they had him. If they'd have known that, we could have gone home earlier. <laughs> <laughs> A scoreless second half ends yeah. this way. Glad you stuck with yeah. me. He just threw that thing up. He, he missed him. Easy. Piece of cake. Easy analysis from Matt Millen. <laughs> In these games, you want to try to see them get better. You know, that's why it's important to be able to watch the film that we were watching. And you could see from the beginning of spring to the end of spring who's making gains. And then in the spring game, you like to see some of it show up. And it did. I think defensively, we said at the start of the game that the defense was ahead of the offense. And I think they proved it here today. I think, uh, again, not to beat a dead horse, but. You know, the offensive line is going to take some time. The quarterbacks are going to take some time. And that's the biggest question. If you don't have a quarterback now in football, you don't have a chance. Yep. So they have some skills. They're just going to have to get better at them. We started the day talking about the optimism of this potentially being a college football playoff team, a Big Ten champion. Uh, beating Ohio State and Michigan is always a target of Penn State. Does your level of optimism change one way or another after what you've seen? And so as a, as a how should I put this? Let me think. As a as as an analyst for the Big Ten, you, I'm going to be I'm going to say yeah they they they're headed in the right direction. As a fan sitting in the stands watching this, you're like you got to be better than that. Okay. And so and there's a lot of factors that goes into that, right? So they're playing a very they're not doing it with very many plays. The play sheets, you know, you probably got 15 plays in there that they're going to run. But defensively is clearly ahead of the offense. As an analyst for the Big Ten, you did both for us. Yeah, right. <laughs> Diplomacy and for the fan side. Well, blue team wins it 10 nothing in a scoreless second half. Pressure up front. James Franklin pointed out denied Dennis Sutton at halftime, and he continued to get to the quarterback with his guys up front on a day for the defense in Happy Valley. Yeah, he and Abdul Carter did what they did last year except a little bit better today, which is good for them. Well, we'll hear from James Franklin, get some of his thoughts on what his team put out there today. Uh, this is also an interesting part of the year, right, with the transfer portal. The transfer oh, yeah. portal opened, and you'll probably have some roster changes coming that can reshape how things look in the fall. Let's go back down to Matt on the field. Yeah, I'm here with Coach Franklin. Coach, spring ball has officially come to an end. When you sit down to watch this tape, how do you evaluate today's game? What do you look for? Well, there's a lot of moving parts, guys playing positions and working with guys that they don't always work with. But I thought it was really good work to be in here in the stadium, in front of the fans, on TV, to evaluate some of these young players. I was very pleased with Omari. I thought he stepped up today, which we need somebody to step up there at wide out. Um, I, thought, I thought KJ, uh, KJ Winston, really flew around 21 on defense and denied Dennis Daniels I thought was unblockable. So some guys flashed. That's going to be good for us. we got a ton of work to do, obviously, between now and West Virginia. But I was pleased with today what we were able to get done. You mentioned guys flashing. Quarterback competition is going to continue to be talked about. What does Drew Aller need to do? What does Bo Perbula need to do to separate themselves from the other? Yeah, you know, today to me is one piece of it, but it's really over to 15 days who they were going against on defense, what some of the matchups were. But we love Bo. He's done a great job for us. I said this last year, it was a battle. It'll be a battle again this year. We'll continue that on through training camp. Uh, the best guy will win, but we love both of our quarterbacks. We're thinking a good situation from that standpoint. We got to get our third quarterback, Jackson Smollett, going as a young kid. We enjoyed watching today, Coach. Best of luck moving forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. James Franklin. Start of year 10 in Happy Valley. Deny Dennis Sutton, the name that keeps coming up. We'll be back after this to wrap it up. So Blue does team Daniels. Wins 10 nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's 
So the blue team gets the white team in the annual blue white spring game all the scoring in the first half. First chance to run out into the field with this group first chance to sing in front of the home crowd at Beaver Stadium back with Matt Millen Connor Runyon Matt McGloin down in the field. Again a day for the defense we talked about the guys up front quite a bit. One guy that James Franklin brought up is Kevin Winston Jr. Oh boy at safety. He's had a couple of great spring practices this week and also a good spring game. Yeah well so we saw him on tape. We liked him. We saw him in this game and we really liked him. He's got it. He's got the size. He's got instincts. He's got to be able to uh, an ability to be able to get to places in the field that few guys can get there. He's got cover skills. I'm mean, see you're gonna, you're going to see a lot of them. There's there's some really good players down in that field in that secondary. Now, one of the guys that'll be playing in front of him at linebacker in the fall is Abdul Carter. He's with Matt McGloin. Yeah, guys, I'm down on the field now with Abdul Carter. Abdul, what's been the biggest difference for you from year one to year two? I would just say my ability to just know what's going on on the field, like what players come and what players to expect, and more like helping out my teammates more, make sure they're in the right place, and make sure we all can play together as a team. Hey, obviously, year two, having the chance to play with Manny Diaz and learn from him. What are some of the things Manny has taught you? How's he helped you develop? And what are some of the adjustments you guys are making here this year? Um, I think the most important thing for Manny is like his insight, not just him being a defensive coordinator, but him being a head coach. He has more of an understanding of the game, and it really helps us on defense. What are some of the things you want to improve upon heading into the summer now and heading into training camp? Uh, personally, just getting my body in shape, you know, just getting faster, getting stronger, to make sure I'm healthy and hydrated. That's most important. We enjoy watching you play, man. Best Thank of luck. Well, Matt, the Utah coaches said this before the Rose Bowl. Number 11 is the guy that we paid the most attention to in our scout. He had a good day and a good showing at Beaver Stadium. Well. If you're going to play in, in Manny Diaz's defense, the first thing you have to be able to do is run, which he can do. He has great instincts. You can't teach that. He's got an ability to be physical at times, and he has a feel for the pass rush. And a pass rusher, a pure pass rusher, is all about feel. He's got it. All right, let's talk some offense down in the field with Matt McGloin. Yeah, down here with Drew Allard, guys. Drew. Spring practice is officially over. Looking back on these 15 practices, how would you evaluate your play? Uh, I think as an offense as a whole, we came a long way. Obviously, every spring ball, you're going to turn the page from last year. And I think we did a really good job of building off we, what we had last year, but also adding some new things in that will really complement our offense. So overall, as an offense, I think we had a really strong spring. What are some of the things you want to improve upon heading into the summer and heading into training camp? Yeah, uh, well, first and foremost, everything, because I, you can never be too good or like too prepared for anything. But I would say just getting with the receivers, tight ends, and running backs, really nailing down the fundamentals of our like pass scheme. Because uh, really, we can take the pass scheme as far as we want to go, but we really have to put the work in for that to happen. So it's going to be a long summer, but it's going to be a really fun summer just grinding with those guys. You know, everybody seems to be talking about the quarterback spot and the quarterback competition. What's that been like for you and Bo? Yeah, I think it's been great as a whole room as a whole. So the whole quarterback room is really competitive. Uh, I want to trade it for the world. I mean, it makes us better each day. We're learning from each other, what we do well, what we could have fixed. And I think we're doing a really good job of helping each other out when we need it too. So it's been really good so far. Well, great job today and best of luck moving forward. So Matt, Drew Aller, when asked what's he need to do better, he says everything. So self-critical looking ahead to the fall. Yeah, and so look, this is still a practice. This is why they're doing it. They're not a finished product. There's a lot of still a lot of moving parts. You heard Coach Franklin say that. You're looking at that offensive line. There's some pieces that have to be moved around. You're looking at some incoming people uh, that'll be coming in as a freshman and then the transfer portal, obviously with a guy like Cephas. So there's still some things to be added in. This is not a finished product. They're far from it. But what they do, what they did gain is they gained experience and they gained some timing and stuff like that and feel, which is really hard to do. You, you just need you need to practice. Yeah. And so they're going to be fine. They'll get better as the season goes on. It'll be fun to watch them. Uh, 140 days away. It's going to come fast. West Virginia here on September 2nd. And back to back home games to get it started for Penn State. Double mats. It was fun with you guys today. You got it. Matt Millen, Matt McGloin down in the field. Connor Onion saying goodbye from Happy Valley. Hope you stay tuned next. Triple header of spring football continues. Gets you out to. East Lansing for the Michigan State Spring Game. The blue team wins it 10 to nothing at the annual blue-white game from Beaver Stadium. We'll talk to you next time.